Hey, it's Mike Draper with AWC TV. Very special guest we have on board with us today, Everett Abrams, known as the Wizard of Wood. And uh, he's going to be talking to us, to us today about uh, some common pitfalls uh, when you go to uh, clean wood. Everett, thanks for coming on board today. We appreciate uh, you taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're a busy, busy guy. And uh, thank you so much for being on. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, you run a company uh, called Deck Restoration Plus and uh, you primarily deal in wood, right? That's correct, yes. So, and that can be anything from fences to decks or, or whatever, but uh, you, you really specialize uh, in that area as opposed to siding or roofs or something like that. Uh, correct, we do um, log cabins and we do wood siding, so anything wood exterior that, that encompasses those fences and decks. Uh, we started out as a pressure washing company many years ago and then when we switched over to the niche of the wood, we held on to the pressure washing services, but we found it was easier to add pressure washing services when we were doing doing the deck for a customer. And uh, that, that formula has worked out real well for us over the years. Yeah, it's it's always really neat. I, I love when a company can really find their, their little niche thing that they can do and then just be the absolute expert at it. And it seems like that's what you guys did. Yeah, it, it's well, that's been a, a, a thing for me in my whole career. I used to be in, uh, I was an operations manager as well. And many years ago, I worked uh, for KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I was actually one of the top seven managers in, in the system at one time. And that was very young at the time. But it's been the thing I've done my whole life is no matter what I wanted to do, I strive to be the best at what I can do. And when I found wood, the wood part of this industry by accident, um, I wanted to be the best at it. So I went outside of my four walls. I went and educated myself on not just what was going on with pressure washing or how guys were pressure washing wood. I actually went to the manufacturers, the wood people, and so forth. I grabbed every kind of book to understand wood and so forth. And I think really that's what helped me is I built that foundation with educating myself. Yeah. So let me just play the, the um, I don't want to call it the idiot, but the, the uneducated here. Uh, when it comes to a deck, I mean, what, what's the big deal? I mean, uh, you just have your pressure washer and you go blast away on it just like you do anything else. And what's, what's the problem? Okay. So that's the first misconception or misunderstanding when it comes to wood is that it's real easy. Most people will start out with, let's blast this thing, let's use pressure. And that's how I figured it out the first time I did it many years ago. I was blasting a deck away because I was doing the house and the lady asked if I could do the deck. I said, sure. And next door was someone that worked for Wallman who at the time manufactured 60% of the pressure treated wood in the United States. So from that conversation, it grew to where I am at today. So I quickly found out that it really isn't pressure that cleans pressure. And, and that still holds true today. And in not just wood, but in, in, in all areas of pressure washing or exterior cleaning, it's really the products you find the right cleaner, the, the right restore, the right brightener, the right stripper, the right, whatever product it is and let it dwell and do the work and then use the pressure washer to rinse with. So once we get past that part of it, we realize that there is a little bit more to it and that, optimal results don't come from the pressure they actually come from actually the restoration okay uh, i could expand on that a little bit if you'd like no go ahead yeah okay um, so what happens is when we talk about misunderstandings that's where uh contractors need to when they're talking to the customer find out what exactly their needs are do they want something clean or do they want it restored so with wood if we're just going to clean it that would be something where we're getting rid of the organic growth. It may be slippery. It may be the stain is intact, but the mold and mildew growth is on the surface and it just needs to be cleaned. That would be one scenario. The other scenario is, do they want it sealed or stained? Are they going to do it or is the contractor doing the work going to do it? And in that case, then it gets into restoration and you use a different product altogether or pro combination of products. Okay. So, I mean, I think I got this figured out already. You just spray the whole thing down with a bunch of bleach and it all turns out great. Yeah, funny. That's really what a lot of people think. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how many people don't even understand 
they're using bleach to clean with it all the time, but they really don't understand how bleach works. And it's the same thing with wood. Uh, years ago, everybody thought chlorine bleach was the thing to use. We found out as we go through time that sodium percarbonate is another alternative, which is oxygenated bleach and it's more environmentally friendly. Then there's other cleaners as well. Uh, we start going up the scale using sodium metasilicate and other products. And what they do is we go up the scale or we change. We find that every scenario that we run into, that there is a product that might be good, better, or best in each scenario in regards to cleaning or in regards to the restoration. So what happens is when the scenario of organic growth will take, because that's what usually what we run into a lot, is bleach will react with the first thing it comes in contact with. So what happens is you have a deck that has heavy mold, mildew, algae, the organic growth maybe along the house, the shaded areas, and then out in the other part of the deck where the sun is, there's not as much. So what happens is we've got a bunch of things going on on a deck. Same thing happens on wood siding. It could be the algae on the one side of the house, the, usually the north side of the house, and then the rest of the house is, is, looks great. So what happens is we have to treat these areas differently, not the same. So when people go out and put bleach on, it reacts with the first thing it comes in contact with. So where it hits the wood, it will actually do something different than where it hits that organic growth. So it hits the organic growth, never really touches the wood. The other area touches the wood. It dries, people stain it, seal it. They wonder, why does it look blotchy? Why does it look good? Why, why does Everett's pictures always look better than mine? It's because you have to know the product and you have to know what bleach does. And in the case and scenario of the wood, sometimes you need to go to a different product. So it's not always just bleach. Sometimes we'll go up the ladder to something a little bit stronger, even to the point where we would take a diluted down stripper would be better to clean with than it would be to use chlorine bleach. And then there's the argument with chlorine bleach, um, like that most people get into, is they say it's bad for wood. Chlorine bleach can be bad for wood if it's misused, and it is often misused because we use it so much. But the real argument isn't about that. It's about how bleach works on porous versus non-porous surfaces. So with all the, the cleaning we do on vinyl siding and aluminum siding and, and concrete, uh, not so much concrete, but a little bit concrete is not as porous, but any of those non-porous surfaces, bleach works excellent. And we find that out. When we get to porous surfaces like wood, the chlorine bleach doesn't always work as well because it does not get into the wood to get to that root of the organic growth that grows into the surface and that porous surface. So you bring up a good point when you bring up bleach. It is a controversial topic when it comes to, to wood, but it is definitely not always the best solution. And if anything, it's probably a better maintenance cleaner, chlorine bleach, than it is to actually clean or restore the wood initially. Yeah. So already um, you've educated us on there's a difference between cleaning and restoration. Uh, so we need to have that mindset and know what we're going to go into to the beginning. And then we also need to understand the depth of chemicals that we're going to need. And it's not just bleach or not just one thing. We, we're going to have to have a little bit of an arsenal uh, to be able to attack wood correctly. Am I hearing you right? And it, that is. And, and basically we've got kind of the, where there's about six different cleaners and about eight different ways to strip wood. And the more you know about those the better results you will get. You may not use some of them very often, but like media blasting is one way. You may not use that at all uh, on the stripping end of it. So there's some you may not use at all, but you need to know what is in that arsenal that you have in case you do need it. It's what happens is the situation, I don't care what substrate you're cleaning and so forth is, it's kind of telling you what you need to use but we always have this vi tunnel vision as contractors, it seems like, that we try to take the project and put it into what we want to clean with, right. not what it needs. So in the case of wood, a lot of times you mentioned bleach. We use bleach to clean with or sodium hydroxide as a stripper. We use sodium hydroxide to strip with. Most people don't even think anything other than that. And they don't realize that there are other products out there and with the way the codings have changed and, and VOC compliance with federal regulations, uh, it's the, the products have changed. There are hybrids out there between water-based, between oil-based, between 
emulsified products where they emulsify the oil into the water uh, based cells of the of the product. These are harder to maintain, clean and strip. And they have created more products to help make it easier for the contractor to restore and to maintain these products. The problem is nobody's educating themselves. I shouldn't say nobody. Not a lot of people are educating themselves on what's actually out there to make the job easier. They're still trying to take what was done 20 years ago and apply it to today's uh, coatings and today's scenarios, and it's not working, and they get frustrated. This is such an, a, a great uh, service to be able to offer. Your average ticket is higher. If you ever restore wood, the before and after is amazing. You have a customer for life. And if you can make this easier for yourself, this could be a great service. I revolve my, revolve my business around this service. But if you just want to add this to a service, to an existing business, like a window cleaner, or a landscaper, or pool companies, I mean, this is a great service if you, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, let's talk about that just a little bit. So um, there, there are obviously some education that needs to happen. A person needs to go through uh, some training, much like uh, you offer. But I was just going to ask that question. So is it worth it? I mean, can I, can I really make some money? Because a lot of guys will shy away from decks because it does get involved and it's not just like this, you know, spray and dash type mentality where we get in there and, you know, make $400 in a couple hours and on to the next one. There, there's a little more tedious of a process. So can a guy really make some money here? Sure. Well, I'll give a scenario because I talk about this uh, quite often. Uh, a lot of people do decks. Uh, they charge a, a low price or they come up with a price for how much do you charge for a deck? And somebody says, oh, $2 a square foot or $3, whatever the price is. And they kind of go with that. We First of all, you can you come up with a graduated price list. If it's cleaning and sealing, if it's cleaning and staining, if it's cleaning, sanding and staining, it's stripping. And you come up with a price list. And you graduate it up to your service, 25, 50 cents, whatever a square foot. And then all of a sudden, people start realizing how much money they left on the table. If you take all the decks you could do in a year at 50 cents extra a square foot, that's a lot of money. And people, people need the price right first. So once they get the price right, then it becomes, okay, now how, how am I, they're getting paid for the work. How do, I, how do I make the money at this? Really what it comes down to is a two-day service. It can be done depending on the product in one day where you prep it and then you clean, uh, stain or seal it a second day. That becomes the issue for a lot of guys is the scheduling and the weather and so forth. There are products now you can do this all in one day. If you're doing the maintenance after the first time you've done this, the maintenance becomes so much easier. So when you go back to do it the second time, what happens is you could clean it and then seal it and put a maintenance coat on the same day. Now, when it comes to the exact pricing of this kind of stuff, I see guys out there, they say, hey, I got 500 bucks for that deck. You know, I worked all day and da, da 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 My average ticket on deck restoration, just restoration, I haven't done any repairs, haven't done anything, $2,400. $2,427 is my average ticket on restoration. That's just the cleaning and the, and the sealing part of it. No repairs, no nothing, no extra upgrades to that. That means people will pay for this service. They want it to last, and will they maintain it? Now, when you start taking that average, that makes a big difference. But you have to have those kind of averages. People are selling this this service low. Mm -hmm. Where it really comes into, I notice where it comes into effect is a lot of guys are, are cleaning houses and to stain or to seal the, the wooden homes. And in those cases, a lot of times, they're not even charging what painters would charge, but they're restoring the wood. Painters are just going to paint over something. They're going to clean the surface and they're going to paint over it. And people are leaving a lot of money on the table in wood restoration. So I think that's the really the, the big part. I think if people were getting paid for it, they realize for what they're actually doing, I think they would be a lot happier. Yeah, no doubt. And probably the customer would be a lot happier too if there were more educated people out there like you that are doing the service. So um, talk to me a little bit, though, too. So you've got this, uh, you know, wood, and you've identified some common misconceptions there about wood. Um, talk to me a little bit about, because they are building decks out of other substrates now besides just wood. So they got this Trek deck and uh, these artificial type, uh, uh, type planking in that. Uh, do you get into any of that? 
We do. We build decks too. And uh, we, we still build it. It runs about a 50 50 deal at this point. Half the people are still doing wood and the other half are doing the composites. The composites have their issues as well. Um, so there's the jury's still out on a lot of those. The, the Trex had a lot of problems before. Uh, now it's an encapsulated product. They have a 25 year guarantee. So it's supposed to hold up a lot better. Uh, one of the things they are looking at, just so because you mentioned bleach earlier, is they're looking at in their manufacturer recommendations now are not using bleach to clean their product because they're worried about color fade. So just a note on the on the bleach. Yeah. Now, yeah. in regards to the industry altogether, uh, you still have pressure treated cedar. You have mahogany. There's a lot of exotic woods that people are using like Ipe and Kumaru and Palope. And people who still want that wood look, what they've done is they realize that if they're going to spend a lot of money, they might go to actually one of these other uh, species, these hardwood species. They actually ha will last longer than the composite decking. So mm. you still have about a 50-50 proposition. Half the people will go with a composite deck. The other half are still going with wood. A lot of wood decks still being built. Matter of fact, cedar consumption, they say, has not hit its peak yet. Wow. So, we're, we're still we're still growing yeah so why don't more guys get into this i mean that's a, a pretty good uh ticket size for cleaning uh you mentioned one reason because you know everybody's kind of a, a mobile contractor doesn't like the second day scenario ever right they don't they don't want to go back um but why why do you think more people don't uh, consider this a niche and, and get into it well i think part of it is uh being frank and a little candid about it is a lot of this, uh, everybody wants easy. They want it, you know, the soft washing part uh, really played a lot part of this too. Everybody's relying on the chemicals and then they went to too strong a chemical sometimes. We hear about damage and some of the solutions are too strong and we see a lot of that because people want quick and easy. And, and that's not wood restoration. It's not quick and easy. It's going to be a little bit of work. But because of that little bit of work, we get more money on the other side of it. We can make it easy if we use the right products and if we figure out how to do it the right way. Uh, and we've already alluded to it, and I can't stress enough, education is, is, is a huge part of that because the education you know, part of it makes it a lot easier. I have found that when I restore uh, somebody's wood siding, when we do the wood siding on a home, or we do exterior cleaning of the windows as part of the service because we get wood fibers on it. But selling the window cleaning, selling pressure washing, selling the house cleaning, the concrete, the stamp concrete, around the pool, all that stuff becomes easier. But the deck and the wood become a real focal point because of the, the, the wow factor of that. So I don't know why people don't put the extra effort into learning the wood restoration because I really think it kind of uh, solidifies your um, standing with that customer. Yeah. And I really find you, you the, the customers are very loyal to the people and you kind of alluded to it, to the people that do wood restoration because they can't find the people to do it, that do it well. So they're always constantly, every couple of years, they're finding somebody new. They try the pressure washer, they try the window cleaner, they try the landscaper and, and they try the painter. And they just, it's hard to find these people. Yeah. So I think if you took all those people that are out there across this country and they listen to this and they say, you know what, there is definitely a need for this. People do ask all the time. They can't find somebody. That's when I say, hey, there's an opportunity. What if I did it better than anybody else? Boom. I just yeah. think right, you write your own ticket. And I think that's why we get the price we do. And it's very common in my area for people to say, He's not the cheapest, but he's the best. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the perfect place you want to be. I think something else that's key here, and um, uh, you know more about it in wood than I do, but I know on the on the glass side, um, there's certain things that happen on glass that no longer uh, qualify it for cleaning. It's not a cleaning anymore. It's a restoration. The guys that figure that out, and they figure out that word, restoration, um, and you've done it in with wood, right? This isn't cleaning. We're restoring. As soon as you get restore in there, it seems like you can jump the ticket ten times because <laughs> yes, that word is is a magic up word, right? It's it like, raises the it raises the price. 
Yes. Yeah, I think uh, Craig Harrison has talked about that with F9, too, about concrete. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to restore the concrete. But he's like, eh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it just works. And so you need, to, you need to figure that out as a business owner. Restoration. When you Once you get out there and you call restoration, you're talking about restoration, restoration is bringing something back to a new or previous state. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. It's not just cleaning anymore. Right. And, and uh, you know, you, I, I, I feel that a lot of the guys now, they're discounting. They're doing some restoration services, but they're discounting it and calling it cleaning. Yeah. No, absolutely. They are. Well, ever it's uh, no... <laughs> wonder why they call you the wizard of wood just in the the brief time that we've been with you there you have you you demonstrate you have so much knowledge on this subject um you do classes and seminars all the time do you have anything upcoming uh i have a class here in shimong new jersey uh january 25th and 26th uh this month uh which is a two-day boot camp uh we have i will be in myrtle beach for a one-day class at a winter expo in uh, I believe that is February 21st. And then okay. I have classes coming up. I'll be doing with uh, Power Wash University as well uh, in Fort Worth. Sounds good. And, and if a person um, wanted to just get in touch with you to <clears throat> either, you know, maybe they want to come out and they just want to do some private sessions with you or get in touch with you, uh, how, how would they get in touch with you? We'll put your link up. Sure. Appreciate it. Um, well, an email address is E. Abrams, my first initial, last name Abrams, A B R A M S, at my company name, which is deckrestorationplus.com. You can always email me. And then we have a toll free number you can call, which is 866 440 DECK. 866 440 DECK. Very nice. So, Everett, uh, I really appreciate uh, you, the Wizard of Wood, coming on board with us today. We'll look forward to doing some more stuff in the future with you. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time today. I appreciate it. It's an honor being with you. So I, I really appreciate the time. Thank you. No problem. We'll talk to you soon. Stay tuned for our next episode of AWC TV by following us on YouTube, Facebook, or our website, awcmag.com. <laughs>